I'm very happy and thankful for One Young World and personally to introduce the person um, and the company that has taken this Entrepreneurship Awards into the hands. So this Entrepreneurship Awards new home is with TFG Asset Management. And it is my great pleasure to introduce Stephen Prince to uh, take it from here. Good morning, everyone. I'm Stephen Prince, Chief Executive Officer of TFG Asset Management. And it's my great pleasure to be presenting the Entrepreneurship of the Year Award to four outstanding young entrepreneurs. As Henry Ford once famously said, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. When you pause to consider it, it's crazy to become an entrepreneur. You're happily and willingly taking on more risk than most people willingly take on in their careers. And you're doing it to chase a dream. That dream might be starting a for-profit business or a non-profit endeavor. It's bold in either case, but certainly we all can agree it's especially noble when one is doing it to improve the lives of others. Today, we get to celebrate five tremendous, four tremendous examples. Four great entrepreneurs who thought they could, and now they have, improved the lives of others. Our first winner is Dr. Anne-Marie Amafadon, MBE. <laughs> Dr. Amafadon is the co-founder of STEMETS, an award-winning social initiative dedicated to inspiring and promoting the next generation of young women and non-binary people in the STEM sector. Since its inception 10 years ago, it supported over 60,000 young people across Europe with programs to enter the technical fields. In 2022, Dr. Amafadon released her first book, She's in Control, a guidebook for women to take back tech. In recognition of her achievements, she was awarded an MBE in 2017 for services to young women and the STEM sector. One Young World, thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here in Belfast amongst so many change makers from around the world. I've always been curious. I've always wanted to solve problems. And when I started STEMETS 10 years ago, it was actually a result of a personal realization that I was part of a shrinking minority then as a woman in tech. Since then, I've become obsessed with our future. We work with five-year-olds. And I've got to gaze into their eyes, work with them on building and creating, but consider what is the future that they will be working in? What is the legacy of our decisions that we make today as technologists, as folks in STEM, and as wider society at the mercy of our innovations? So much of what we see coming from our innovative sectors forgets folks exist from seat belts that harm women and children, to voice recognition that doesn't recognize a brilliant Irish accent, facial recognition that can't tell uh, faces of people with colors uh, apart, and even things like tele-robotic DNA therapies. Science fiction is becoming our science reality, and we're creating more problems than we're solving. Now, STEM and STEAM, which my organization work with, which is science, technology, engineering, arts, and maths, are about creativity, altruism, and embracing difference. There's an impact in our decisions, not just on individuals, but on organizations and business, but on wider society. Ideas can come from anywhere, just like problems exist everywhere. And technology is a powerful tool, one that's too important to leave in the hands of a few. And that's why, as an entrepreneur, I do the work that I do. So I wanted to close by uh, sharing a motivational reminder to all the entrepreneurs and fellow change makers in the audience and those that will be joining us shortly. And it's from Grace Hopper, who's one of my great heroes, role model, 
uh, woman in the Navy who uh, was instrumental in so much of the technology that we use today. And she said that a ship in port is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. A timely reminder, good luck folks. Uh, the future is ours to make, and this is our legacy. Thank you very much. Congrats. Next, we have Everett Taylor. Everett is CEO of Kickstarter, the world's largest premier crowdfunding platform. Everett has a long history of entrepreneurial success, starting his first company, Easy Events, at the age of 19, and establishing ET Enterprises in 2012, a diverse portfolio of companies that includes Pop Social, Millisense, RX, and more. As CEO of Pop Social, he was recognized as Forbes 30 Under 30 in 2018, utilizing his entrepreneurial creativity. Everett is a passionate supporter of the arts and supporting creative entrepreneurs to bring their dreams to reality. Everett, please join me at the podium. This award is mad nice. This is, you guys put some money into this. I appreciate that. Um, what's up, everybody? I saw my man sleep up there earlier, so hopefully he wakes up. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Everett Taylor. I'm the CEO of Kickstarter, and I feel really grateful uh, to be here today. Um, they hit me before this, and they were like, can you send, you, send us your script? And I'm like, I'm going to speak from the heart. I'm always going to keep it 100. So... I want to thank One Young World. This is an incredible organization. I want to thank Stephen Prince from TFG Asset Management, big New York in the house. Um, this is, I'm living my dream, y'all. This is, this is incredible. I come from Southside, Richmond, Virginia. Um, shout out to any uh, Virginians in the house. And uh, listen, like where I'm from, like this doesn't happen. Like to be in Northern Ireland, to be in front of so many people from different countries doing amazing things in their lives. Like, people where I'm from don't get to do this. A lot of people where I'm from don't even le leave like a few block radius, you know? And so I'm very thankful for entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship saved my life. Entrepreneurship gave me opportunities that I never thought that I would be able to have. Entrepreneurship has allowed me to impact the lives of literally millions of people through out, you know, my entrepreneurship journey, and I just feel very grateful for that. And I hope that anybody that's sitting in this audience with a dream feels like it's possible that no matter what the haters say, no matter what the doubters say, to know that what you want to do and the impact that you want to leave on this world is absolutely possible. And never let anyone make you doubt that at all. Um, thank you again to One Young, uh, One Young World. Um, this is absolutely incredible. I get to be the entrepreneur of entrepreneurs at Kickstarter. If you, ain't got, if you haven't used Kickstarter, download the app and uh, <laughs> you know, support these entrepreneurs and creators out there making their dreams come true. And if you're somebody who can't get venture capital or can't get support from you know, uh, film studios or record labels or whatever you're trying to do, come to Kickstarter because we're here to support your dreams. Thank you, everybody, and have an incredible time. Thank you. Awesome. Don't forget. <laughs> so coming up next, Matteo Salvato, the founder of Asteroid. Asteroid is the company behind the Hablalo app that directly assists more than 375,000 people with communication disabilities in 65 countries completely for free. They also partner with companies and governments to transform into more inclusive organizations using the power of technology. Matteo also serves as a teacher in innovation and entrepreneurship to children at ORT schools and has written a book, The Battle for the Future, to motivate the next generation to collaborate for good. His mission is to turn society into a more accessible place for all through the inclusion Revolution. Matteo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much. I want you all. Thank you all for being here. 
Pretty glad to be receiving this beautiful award. My name is Mateo Salvato. I'm 24 years old. I come from the beautiful Buenos Aires city, capital of Argentina. Woo! Argentina's in the house. World champions in here. Any of you? Cool, let's go. Um, I was born and raised in Argentina. Um, and I stand before you today to, first of all, express my deep gratitude to One Young World for this unbelievable recognition. Um, throughout the past seven years with my startup, Asteroid, with his team, we have already helped plus 375,000 communication disabled people in 70 countries entirely for free. And awards like this work as amazing catalysts for me and my team, of course, to continue fighting for a more accessible world. But I think this speech shouldn't be about us, shouldn't be about me, right? We at Asteroid are just one small piece of a giant puzzle that humanity is yet to solve. There are more than 1.1 billion disabled people in the world. You heard that right. 1.1 billion with a B. And more than 600 million of them are communication disabled. Most of these people suffer extreme exclusion every day, trying to access products or services, or most importantly, trying to exercise their rights. And I think, and I'm pretty sure you agree, it is time to change that, right? So I'm not standing here to tell you what I can or could do. What Matteo did or does is absolutely anecdotic to the effects of this conversation. What I'm interested in telling you today is anything that I did or do, or that my team did or does, you can do, and probably way better. We did it from Buenos Aires, from our loved Buenos Aires, from Latin America, with no investors, no many resources. We did it. We are doing it. And all it takes to change the world sometimes, or all the times, is just a few crazy young people like us here, united together for the same cause. And I think this event is the living proof of that statement. Thus, I invite you to join Asteroids Inclusion Revolution, and I thank again Wan Young Wall for this amazing award, which, if you allow me, I'd like to dedicate to my mother, who devoted her life to helping communication disabled people. <laughs> Hi, Mom. We made it. I'd like to dedicate to my dad, whose birthday is today, so happy birthday, Dad from Belfast, Northern Ireland, happy birthday. <laughs> um, my partners, of course, our team, my beloved country, and most importantly of all, all of our hundreds of thousands of active users who will soon be millions. Thank you all, y vamos Argentina. Thank you. Congrats. And finally, we have Sarah Wahidi who's the CEO and founder of Etasab, Afghan's first civic technology startup. Since June 2020, Etasab has been providing near real-time security and city service alerts to Afghan citizens through the Etasab app, Etasab meaning accountability in Dari and Pashto, and has expanded to nationwide coverage in 2023. The app allows users to send reports on in incidents which occur in their vicinity, including information on the Taliban's crackdown of women's and girls' education. By allowing citizens, especially Afghan women and youth, to engage and inform in giving the right information and disseminating to local communities, the app is focused on providing viable civic technology to serve the needs of communities and those who reside in them. Sarah, please welcome up to the podium. I'm not as creative as Everett, so you're gonna have to stick with me in a, in a speech. I wanna first thank One Young World for this award and I want to commend them for their dedication to empowering and developing young leaders to build a fair, sustainable future for all. 
I developed technology which aims to bring transparency and accountability in regions across the world where it's more often than not better for regimes to keep citizens in the dark. Democratizing access to information is a passion of mine because of an incident which happened almost 30 years ago. Let me take you back to Kabul on an average morning in 1996. You wake up and turn on the radio, and you hear the regime in power, the Taliban, announce its latest decree on Afghan women. First, an overview of the current laws. Going to school and any form of studying is banned. Working of any kind is banned. Leaving the house without a male chaperone is banned. Showing any skin whatsoever is banned. In one case, you know of a woman in Kabul who had the end of her thumb cut off for wearing nail polish. Being involved in politics, or even just speaking publicly, is banned. Now let's return to this moment. Today is October 3rd, 2023. Almost 30 years later, most of these laws are in place again. 14 million women and girls are being erased from sight across Afghanistan. Today, for example, is the 700th day that girls have been banned from school. What we are witnessing is gender apartheid, and it's unfolding at a scale that is unprecedented on this earth. Before attending this week's summit, I spent every day talking to girls who are attending online schools in secret. They wanted me to share many messages with you all, but I'll leave you with one from a student named Tahmina. Again, after 30 years, Afghanistan is the worst country in the world to be a woman. But this time, we are not silent, and our voices will reach every corner of this earth. Our position is clear. No to gender apartheid. Stand on the right side of history and support us in our fight. Thank you. Thank you.